I'd like to talk to you a little bit about literature review. Um, most of you may know what the term means, but there are lots of international students that are watching this and that uh, we want to bring into the fold and, and kind of brief on this. Basically, a literature review discusses published information in a particular subject area um, and sometimes published information in that area but in a, in a limited time frame. In other words, not from the beginning of time until now. It may be a certain particular um, period of research on coastal issues, on coastal environmental issues or whatever the topic is that uh, you are interested in researching. Um, so I've, for example, had students look at um, southern Louisiana um, at issues related to the degradation of wetlands in uh, southern Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico, but they limited the research on what had been done to a certain period of time. Um, they were not interested maybe in very early stuff, uh, more interested perhaps in more recent developments um, with the uh, advance of the ocean into the, the wetlands. Um, one of the questions that always comes up is how is a literature review different from a regular academic research paper? A research paper basically usually develops a new argument and does uh, field research or lab research, uh, original research on a topic. In our case, our interest is coastal policy and, and, and management, and so it would be perhaps survey research, it would be case studies on some um, development, uh, let's say, uh, rising sea levels and their impact on planning for coastal communities, something like that. Um, a research paper will also contain a literature review often at the beginning uh, in order to sort of lay out the topic and uh, summarize what, what others have done on that topic, but that would be more of a roadmap and, and more limited and then the research paper itself would constitute the body. Um, you use literature, in other words, as a foundation uh, to support the new insights or, or, or findings that you come up with. A literature review is intended to summarize and to synthesize and, and analyze arguments and ideas of others about the topic. Uh, That can be, of course, very valuable and, and somewhat complicated as well. Our assumption is that most people are not experts on a topic and can simply launch into it um, and we have to believe their word on why this is important and what we know about it. So all of us, including myself, rely on research done by previous investigators, by previous scientists, um, to uh, do further work. And so a, a literature review is a good place to start. It's a good stepping stone. Uh, it's a good beginning, for example, for people who are going to do um, a thesis or a whatever other uh, written requirements there might be either in your academic environment or even in your job, um, professionals, uh, in, in other words, not students but professionals, use literature reviews um, to um, basically uh, keep themselves up to date with what is current in their field of professional work. Um, for scholars, investigators, researchers such as ourselves, um, the depth and the um, specificity of the literature review basically establishes the, our credibility, the writer's credibility in the field. It shows that we have looked at what has been done before, that we understand it, that we see the conflicts that may exist in the literature between different researchers on a topic. 
Um, and a literature review kind of provides the background to then, if that's desirable, launch a thesis, uh, a PhD thesis, or a master's thesis, or a capstone or creative component or some other piece of, of work. Um, it's pretty much essential for any uh, research that is done um, because there is almost no topic, I would say there is no topic um, on which uh, scientists and, and scholars, investigators, uh, even government commissions and so on have not done research before uh, which is necessary in order to then follow the subject through and then do some original work on it. Um, sometimes a literature review is the paper itself. In other words, uh, I often assign a literature review, um, you know, depending on the circumstances, uh, 15 or 20 pages, sometimes more, uh, on a given topic as the paper that is going to be submitted, the research that's going to be submitted for a class or a seminar or something like that. Um, this is often valuable for students who are uh, beginning a, a field, in other words, once you're in a PhD program, um, you still have to do a literature review, but you are probably already somewhat familiar with the, the research that's been done on the topic that you want. I'll, I'll give you an example. This is Defying Ocean's End, which is a, a very uh, comprehensive look at the uh, condition of the world's coastal zones and oceans. And if you look at any uh, chapter in it, for example, let's look at the chapter on the Caribbean. Um, at the end of their chapter, there is a very large section um, that reviews the research that has been done um, that lists the research that has been consulted and some some of this has been cited in the actual report um, and what it does then is it sort of validates I mean I mean this thing is a literature review that is four solid pages long for a um, a report on the Caribbean that is only this thick it's it's only about um, 20 pages or so so you can see the importance of doing a, li a literature review for um, work such as this, which is um, the um, result of a conference that was held. Uh, it is a project that is partly sponsored by uh, Sylvia Earle, the famous oceanographer, um, and is a this is a professional uh, policy uh, center. Uh, but the literature citation and, and, and the literature review that comes uh, inside this fairly, fairly large report is a, an extremely important part of it because it essentially uh, gives credential to um, the information that is then presented in the report. Um, so I wanted you to understand why we do literature reviews. Um, don't do a report if I ask for a lit literature review because I don't want to report. What I want is for you to look at the research that has been done in books, in professional journals, in websites, but limit that because there's a lot of other stuff besides websites. Um, government reports, a federal, state, uh, special planning commissions, NOAA, um, the uh, Coast Guard, uh, sometimes uh, um, the Army Corps of Engineers and others, sometimes their, their private consultant reports, all of those on your subject uh, ought to be reviewed and looked at. Um, and then you have a choice. You can summarize uh, what these pieces of research say. You can synthesize them. Um, you can also critique the sources um, by discussing uh, sort of what is strong, what is weak, uh, what's missing. Uh, you can do that as well. So there are different ways of, of doing this. You should um, divide your information into kind of subheadings. Uh, very often you want to begin with a historical 
uh, background of the issue and what was written about it in the earliest um, period when the problem or the issue, you know, became uh, prominent and became a, a subject for discussion. The one thing I want to mention, however, that is crucial is you should limit the scope of what you do. You should have a relatively tight and narrow topic. On most issues related to the coastal zones, there is significant information, sufficient information, that you can limit the topic and essentially drill down into it, find as much of the research that has been done and present that, as opposed to having a topic that is enormously broad where you simply skip across the surface, um, which is not that interesting. And it also won't be that valuable if you use the literature review to then do something else, like an original study, like a thesis, uh, or a big research project, or if you use the literature review to write a grant proposal. Because essentially, when you write a grant proposal, you're expected to demonstrate a knowledge of the previous research and make a case for why you should be getting, you know, $10,000 or $10 million to conduct a research project. So literature, knowing how to do a literature review is, is very important and very valuable. Um, I also suggest that you uh, do a little search and that you find a good model res uh, literature review uh, that has been done on the research uh, topic that, that you have selected. Uh, so again, uh, don't write a research report, write a literature review. Uh, narrowly define your topic. Don't try to do too many different things uh, in it. Uh, drill down as deep as you can uh, to, to really uh, get a, a good grip on the topic, on the controversies. And I'm especially interested because in the literature there's always some disagreement between different researchers on what things mean on this subject. There is even disagreement on what science and data means. And if you can bring that out and put it into your uh, into your uh, literature review, that makes it uh, more valuable and very interesting. So I uh, hope that you uh, enjoy doing doing a literature review, uh, even if it's not assigned for a course or by an instructor. Um, kind of do a literature review to train yourself on uh, on how to do that because you'll need to do that. Uh, not just in the academic context, but also in your professional work later.